Hi class, this is Mr. Anderson. Today I'm going to show you how to use the factor label method. Uh, some science teachers refer to this as dimensional analysis and some people just call it common sense. And so what is the factor label method? Factor label method is the way that you solve a problem. And so uh, there's a nice uh, method you can use to do that. And so if I were to, for example, to ask you um, how many hours are there in a day? that thought process you go through of remembering that it's 24 hours in a day is actually a simple form of the uh, factor label method. So what we do with that is we take a value, let's say 55 miles per hour, and we're going to convert that to a different unit, like meters per second. Um, this becomes really important in chemistry, physics, physical science, because you can solve these very complex problems. And as long as you follow uh, the methods that I lay out in this podcast, you should be good to go. Now, an analogy uh, or a good way to think about how this works is what's called six degrees of separation. So there was a scientist uh, uh, back in the 40s, I think it was, who said, let's say we have a person here who lives, uh, we'll say, in New York City. And then we have a person who lives way over here. Let's say they live in Montana. He said that we could take any two people and we could connect them with at least six degrees of separation. In other words, this guy might be friends with this guy. And this guy might have a sister who is this person right here, who might have a friend who is this person, uh, who also has a friend who knows this person. And so the idea is that you're connected to anybody on the planet by no more than six degrees of separation. There's a funny game with movies and using Kevin Bacon. It's called Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon that uses movie uh, um, trivia to kind of do the same thing. But again, that's just kind of an analogy. Um, so what do we do in this? Conceptually, we're taking a quantity. So let's say that is miles per hour. And we're going to convert that to something like meters per second. And so all of these questions will start with some kind of a quantity and then we're going to end up with a desired quantity. But you have to use your brain to figure out what kind of conversion factors we're going to use. In other words, what are some important things if we're going from hours to seconds, how are you actually going to convert that or miles to meters? We're going to have to know some kind of a conversion uh, to make it from that given quantity to the desired quantity. Okay, so this is my method, and there's lots of different methods uh, laid out to do the factor label method. But if you follow these steps, you can solve pretty, uh, pretty complex problems. So let's start with one that's really, really easy. And let's say we say that you've got one day, and you want to convert that to hours. So what's the first step? You start with a given quantity, and you always express it as a fraction. And so even though one day doesn't need to be written over one, let's just do that because it's going to allow you to solve the problems. Lots of times you'll actually have units over units and so it makes it easier. Okay, next we're going to convert with a conversion factor. Okay, so what does that mean? We're here with days, but we want to eventually make it to hours. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write days underneath and I'm going to write hours on the top. So first we insert the conversion factor, then we add our numbers. Well, we know that one day is 24 hours. Um, so what's next? We cancel the units. This is a day on the top, so I'm going to cancel that out. And here's a day on the bottom, and so I'm going to cancel that out. And then the fourth step, what I do is I actually solve the math. And so I'm going to multiply across the top. One times 24 hours is 24 hours. Now I'm going to multiply across the bottom. 1 times 1, we lost the day, is 1. And so my answer equals 24 hours. Now, you could have just done that in your head. Um, but if you follow these steps on all the problems we work with on factor label method, you'll do fine. So let's do a couple of practice ones. Um, so let's say we start with this. We've got 12 days over here. So we've got 12 days. So I write that over 1. I then figure out my conversion factor. Well, what do I want to go to? I want to eventually make it to seconds. And you don't even have to know how many seconds there are in a day. So I do know that I could go from days to hours. I also know that I could go from hours to minutes. And I also know that I could go from minutes to seconds. Okay, so why was I doing that? Well, if I got days up here, I could put days on the bottom. I know those are going to cancel. So now I just go back. Once I have them all laid out, 
I now know that one day has 24 hours in it. These, uh, let's go to the next one. And that one hour has 60 minutes in it. And I know that one minute has 60 seconds in it. So now the next step is to cross out and cancel out all the units. So I'm going to cancel out days. I'm going to cancel out hours. I'm going to cancel out minutes. And now I'm left with seconds. And so now using my trusty calculator, I'm going to take 12 times 24 times 60 times 60. And what do I get is, let's write this down here, 1, 0, 3, 6, 8, 0, 0 seconds. Okay, now if you've watched my podcast on significant digits, you know that this is a silly answer to write because we only have two significant digits in this first one. This answer can only have two significant digits as well. And so I would write this in scientific notation. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And so this is going to be written as 1.0 times 10 to the sixth seconds. In other words, that's how many seconds are in 12 days. Let's try another one, because that's the one we had talked about earlier. Let me erase that. Let's say we want to go from 55 miles an hour. So I'm going to write 55 miles. And now look what I'm going to do. I'm going to write that over one hour. So this is why we use fractions, because once we start having units over units, it's important that you've written it out that way. So now what do I want to start with miles and I want to end up with meters. So what I could do is I could put another conversion factor here. I know that one mile is exactly 1609 meters. So one mile is 1609 meters. I also know, since we're going to seconds, that I could put hour up on the top and I could go to minute on the bottom. And I could also put the minute up on the top and I could put seconds on the bottom. So what do we do? Well, let's cross them out. Oh, first I got to come back here. So one hour has 60 minutes in it. And then over here, one minute has 60 seconds in it. So now I cross out all my values. I'm going to cross out miles and miles. I'm going to cross out, what else? Hours right here and hours back here. And then I'm going to cross out minutes here and minutes here. So what do I have left? Well, I have meters on the top. That didn't get canceled out. And then we have seconds on the bottom. And so now I've made it to meters per second. So what's that final step? I have to actually do the math. And so I'm going to go all the way across the top. So using my trusty calculator, I'm going to take 55 times 1,609. And then I'm going to take 60 times 60, which is 3,600. And I'm going to divide that out. And so the value I get is 24.5819, blah, 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 blah. So it goes out like that. So how many significant digits do we have? Well. This had two significant digits, and so my answer can only have two significant digits as well. So let me write my answer up here. My answer is going to be 25 meters per second. That has two significant digits as well. Now one thing you might be wondering is, well, this has two significant digits, but doesn't this one here have just one significant digit? And the right answer is no. <laughs> And the reason why is that in a conversion, we think of these conversions actually having an infinite number of significant digits. And so we don't have to figure those in because we know that one mile is exactly 1,609. Um, and so we don't have to worry about ones like that. Okay, so that's the factor label method. And if you always follow those steps, putting fractions to start, then figuring out your conversion factors, finally crossing out the units and then doing the math, you should make it there. Now there are a few limitations. Um, these work really well if we have a constant difference. In other words, there's always 609 meters in uh, uh, one mile, or there's a constant ratio between the two. But we can't do both of those at the same time. In other words, when you're converting from Fahrenheit degrees to Celsius degrees, remember you have to take that times 9 fifths and then add 32. And so since you're doing two things, the factor label method actually falls apart at that point. And so factor label method can solve a ton of things, but it does have a few limitations. But if you always follow those four rules, then you should be good to go.